Hey, this is Ryan. I'm the head of the Proxy Network support team here with another video tutorial, this time to show you the process of first-time login. You'll know you're a first-time login when you've uh, finished installing gatewayweb.msi and you're presented with a little paragraph of red text that makes mention of first-time login. And when you click the Finish button, it'll open up your Internet Explorer browser and bring you to the landing page of your web console for the very first time. And notice that I'm in uh, Google Chrome here and not in IE. So if you want to use uh, Chrome or Firefox, the, the simple process here is just uh, click on the browser button over here and there will be a button that says Enable Web Desktop and that will give you the Microsoft ClickOnce browser plugin that will allow you to use other browsers other than IE to use your proxy web console. Anyways, once you get to your landing page for the first time and got your plugin if necessary, click the Login As button here. And for the first time we log in, we want to log in as the local administrator account on the server. And we'll plug in our other user accounts later, but for the very first time, we'll log in as the local administrator account. And great, once we get logged in here, we'll see our home tab and yours will be blank for the very first time. Uh, the first thing we'll probably do is go to the hosts tab here and the host tab is where we'll go first to create groups for machines to then reside in. So we can make groups here maybe based on location or business unit or job function of the type of people using the machines on the other end. The process looks like this. We'll click add new group here. Let's just say I have a Toronto office and I'll click insert. And then if you have a few other offices, add new group. And insert. And that's the process here. The benefit to creating groups is basically to set access policies on the groups. Uh, one of the things I'll cover near the end here is on the accounts tab where we get to tell the software who is allowed to log in and who gets access to what. Uh, when, during the account import process, we can pick and choose what groups of machines the uh, technicians get access to upon logging into the web console. So that's the major benefit to creating groups here is to basically make boundaries, you know, if that applies to uh, your IT department's needs and whatnot. So, after we've created a couple groups here, I'll take it to the Gateway tab here to set up a couple things. The General section here, click on Edit. The first time the proxy host clients report into your server, which we'll use the deployment tool to deploy them in a different video, the first time they report in, they'll be in the unmanaged host group, and then it'd be up to you to move them from the unmanaged host group to the all host group, and you do that from the host tab. I would just say tick this checkbox at the top here because this will make sure that when hosts first report into your server, they'll go directly to your all host group and become immediately accessible for connectivity the moment they report in for the first time. Uh, status updates for managed hosts. So periodically throughout the day or whenever something interesting happens on the proxy host machines, they will send an update to the proxy web console server. For example, if somebody logs into Windows, the, the client will send an update to the server, so that way that machine will be listed as the appropriate user is being logged in, and that machine's marked as available for connection. And uh, when somebody logs out of Windows, you know, another update will be sent to the server and the machine will be, will be marked as not logged in. So this mechanism makes sure that the server keeps track of all the hosts. And the hosts do their due diligence of reporting their status to the server, but this mechanism here does the exact opposite. The server will go down the list of each of your proxy host machines and say, hey, host number one, you there? Okay. Hey, host number two, you there? Oh, you're offline. Let me mark you as offline. So this does the whole thing in reverse here, and if you have under 500 hosts, 30 minutes should do just fine. If you have over 500, um, I would probably say 60 minutes here to give it more time to go through its round here, to go through its round of updating. Automatic host cleanup. So this one will serve basically as a mechanism that'll delete stale hosts from your database of machines after they haven't been heard from in X amount of days. So for example, you, you know, re-image machines, rolling out some new machines. Um, you delete them from AD. However, they're still going to show up in proxy for up to 30 days as it's configured right here. So you can either delete them manually or set this to maybe seven days so that way the software will you know, get rid of old workstations on you, you know, so you don't have to you know, clear the old workstations out on your own. Uh, the last part here is the concurrent user license mode timeouts. So the software uses a concurrent licensing mode, so after you get logged in here and you don't wiggle your mouse, it will say, do you want to stay logged in after 15 minutes? And if you don't wiggle your mouse in another five minutes, it'll actually log you out and free up your license. And, you know, the idea here is so that you won't be, you know, inadvertently burning a license when you're, when you're not actually using proxy. So if you want to change your timeouts, this is where to do it.
Okay, the rest of the section I'll breeze through here. The auditing section, the software keeps an audit log gets stored to the installation directory of the server and um, or it, of the proxy gateway software. You can click edit here to uh, provide a different path if you don't want it stored in that location. And the protocol section here allows us to tell the software how to listen for proxy hosts on your network. The proxy web console server listens inbound by default on UDP 2303. Uh, just let us know if you want to use a different port. Our support team or myself will uh, guide you through that process should you not like to use our uh, the manufacturer supplied defaults. The encryption is always on by default, AES 256-bit. Uh, the database gets updated once a day at 6 a.m. Um, I wouldn't touch that. Leave that alone. Uh, the software is allowed will allow you to make screen recordings of machines and they get stored by default to the installation directory in a recordings folder and this is probably the only thing that can you know over time fill up your hard drive so you can click edit here and uh, fill in your own path if you wanted to uh, have the recordings stored in a you know, place that you want uh, local address ranges here this is basically where we can tell the software what ranges are local to your company I typically leave this alone unless uh, we need to touch it um, the grouping area here this lets us make grouping rules so that the hosts when they report in and are deployed, they get placed into their appropriate groups. Now we can do this by AD rule or IP rule or a tag rule. Uh, I'm going to focus on the IP rules here uh, in this call. So if I click add IPv4 rule and I have a bunch of groups here, um, I'll just choose the Toronto office for this. So let's say uh, all the machines in my Toronto office are reporting in from 10.251.10.x, you know, 1 through 255. I'll give it a safe number of addresses like 255. You know, target the uh, the group that has that. You know, target the group that I want here, and click OK. And when I do that, that'll make sure that all the client machines that report in get end up in that Toronto office. And you might do this several times. You know, when you're first setting things up here, you know, to make sure that the client machines end up finding their correct homes here. So it's mostly a set and forget type of thing here. And the last part I want to focus on is the accounts section. The accounts tab is where we tell the software who is allowed to log into the proxy web console and who is allowed to access what hosts. So your list will be, you know, blank when you first uh, set this up here. You'll probably have only one account listed. It would be the account you used to log in for the first time, which becomes an administrative account. So first step here, import new account. And in the location drop down, this is where you'll see your domain and you can pick, uh, you can use that if there's more than one and tell the software who you had in mind. Let's just say John Smith is my day-to-day -day user account. I'll go check names and next. And then what type of account is he? So an administrative user gets all seven tabs across the board. An administrative user of the web console can adjust security, run reports and change settings. The master account type is the designation for the day-to-day -day folks, you know, the folks that would be using proxy on a day-to-day -day basis to provide support. And the last step here is what machines do they get access to when they log into the web console? The all host group is everything. And if you want them only to have access to, you know, maybe the you know, end user PCs and production class servers within and maybe the Toronto office, click next here. And when they log in, they'll only be able to see and support and connect to the machines that you've given them here. And you can use this as a very good mechanism to lock down who gets access to what. This has been another video short with Ryan from Proxy Network Support. Thank you for watching.